Hey friends, Allie Dameron here. In today's video, I wanna talk a little bit about maintenance of weight. This is something that a colleague of mine and I have been really chatting about lately um, because so many women feel like they are constantly finding programs to lose weight and then gain it back and then lose weight and gain it back. So in this video, I'm gonna kind of chat about what needs to happen so that that doesn't happen for you anymore and we can kind of get off the hamster wheel. If you haven't hit the subscribe button yet, hit that button to be notified anytime I post new content related to women's health, hormones, and holistic health. I've been in the weight loss industry for 18 years and I've learned a lot, I've seen a lot, and I've also experienced so many aspects of the diet industry. So one thing that I really notice is so many women getting on the diet feeling like they need to lose fat, lose weight, and then doing that and feeling like they can go back to the old lifestyle that got them to the place where they felt like they needed to lose weight. And so in this video, I wanna just share with you a couple of thoughts that I have on how to kind of stop doing this because it's such a bad cycle to get in. And every time that we try to lose weight, it actually gets harder because our metabolism is not as flexible each and every time that we diet. And so, you know, there becomes times where we need to sort of like periodize this and not just live our whole entire life in a caloric deficit because that is not very healthy for our hormones, our mineral balance, stress, and our metabolism and thyroid in general. So I wanna encourage you, when you are looking to lose weight, I wanna tell you some different things to kind of look for. In your program that you do or how you do it, and I have lots and lots of videos on this channel about my recommendations on how to lose weight sustainably, realistically, and so that you can obviously maintain it. So I'll leave some of the links down in the description below for that, but when you're, dieting in general, you really and truly do want to make sure that you can pretty much do this for the rest of your life. And I don't mean that you have to be in like this strict caloric deficit, but safe weight loss is about a 15% or so deficit, which is not a huge amount. So for the sake of simplification, let's say that you cut your calories by about 250 to 300 calories in your weight loss phase, and you yield about a 0.5 to one pound per week weight loss on average. So right, we're gonna see the fluctuations on the scale and it might go up and down. And I just had this conversation with a patient earlier today you really should only see a brand new low weight about every 14 to 21 days, and then it's gonna bounce back up. Now over time, the highs will get lower and the lows will get lower, and so it you know, steadily goes down, but it's not necessarily just a linear process. It is a whole bunch of fluctuations, and that is normal and actually what is ideal. When we only cut 250 or 300 calories, you guys, that's not that much food. It's like one of those things where it's like easy to do, easy to not do. And when we go back to our maintenance, once we have gotten to our goal weight or gotten to the place where we want to be, we can't go back to like, drinking the margaritas every weekend and the chips and queso all the time and expect our weight to maintain. We can slowly add back that 250 to 300 calories per day on average and hopefully maintain weight, but it's not going to be able to, you know, just revert back to our old lifestyle. And I think the other thing with expectations is a lot of women assume, I saw this like post on social media the other day, which was by a woman, her name's uh, Shannon Collins, and she's called the gym nurse on Instagram. But she posted something like, if you were able to like go out and party and drink and eat whatever you wanted on the weekends and diet during the week in your twenties and got the body that you want or could lose weight like congratulations that's amazing that your body did that but like in our 30s 40s 50s and beyond that's probably not going to be a super realistic thing to do we're going to have to kind of maintain some habits you know on the weekends to continue this weight loss and so i think when we are doing this you really and truly do want to do a weight loss program, protocol, regimen, whatever, that you can pretty much continue doing. If you really just like cut calories down to 1200 and you over exercise, you exercise six days a week, and you see some weight loss initially for a few weeks there, 
that's not, for most of us, something that we wanna maintain. We're gonna get sick of it, our brains are gonna get sick of it, we're gonna to start to really crave a lot of food, we're gonna be hungry, we're gonna want sugar, we're gonna to wanna to throw in the towel, we're gonna go wanna go on vacation, on social functions, those types of things, and you're not gonna to wanna to maintain that. So I really, really encourage you that when you're looking for something to help you lose weight, do something sustainable. Is it going to take a little bit longer initially to lose the five or 10 pounds? Yes, but I argue actually that over time we save time because this yo-yo dieting of up and down, I mean, some people have been doing that for three decades of their life or longer, their whole life, their whole adult life. Some people have been doing that and still not super happy with where they are. So I argue that if you just can do it sustainably, slowly, and kind of like, Except, like settle in here, you will get there faster, even though initially it might take longer um, because of the, the yo-yoing. And so I really, really encourage you to find a program that is sustainable and realistic. If you need some accountability, find an accountability partner. If you need help figuring out what's going on, like why you can't lose weight, is it your thyroid, your insulin, your hormones, whatever, you know, work with someone like myself to help you kind of uncover those things, but also work with somebody who knows your numbers. I can't tell you how many um, people, women that come to me that are working with people who either have them like way too high in their numbers and they're just not in a caloric deficit or have them way, way, way too low in their starving, ravenous, hunger, energy, cravings, mood and sleep is all off. Their metabolism is definitely being stretched. So you want to just, you know, look at the objective data of your weight um, measurements. You also want to look at non-scale victories, like how your clothes are fitting, how strong you are in the gym. I think switching the narrative a little bit as in terms of just solely looking at weight and looking at your strength training, how many pounds you can lift, how many pull-ups you can do, how many push-ups you can do. Like those things are also great measurements and great pieces of data and goals to do instead of just solely always looking at that number on the scale. And so I just want to encourage you that you, the moral of the story with this video was to remind you that what you're doing to lose weight cannot be so extreme that it is not sustainable for you in the future. And if you feel like it is, it's probably time to find something different. Now, on the opposite side of that spectrum, weight loss is hard. Like, I'm not going to sugarcoat it. It is something that is hard to do. It is hard to maintain a caloric deficit for days and weeks at a time. Remember that our metabolism does not just like reset every 24 hours. It is over a course of days and weeks at a time. And so if you continuously find yourself doing really well during the weekdays and staying in your deficit, but then the weekends you wanna go out for steak dinners and drink wine or go to chips and queso and margaritas and things like that, remember that that's gonna drag that average out. And a lot of people, myself included, I've struggled with this too, do that and they stay at maintenance and they're frustrated and they are actually like doing all this work during the week to just solely like maintain their weight. So I'm gonna be really honest for myself, if I want to change my body in some way or I feel a little bit fluffy or my pants are getting tighter or something like that, I will do virtually the same thing all the time during the week. I might be like a little bit tighter, like I'm talking five, 10% tighter on my nutrition. Um, if I'm trying to lose a little bit and I just pay attention to the weekends because those are always like my weekends. And so if I'm trying to lose, I pay a lot more attention there. If I'm just trying to maintain, I kind of am a little bit more lenient. I am not going out for margaritas and you know bottles of wine and things like that regularly. That still is not a part of my life. And a margarita can fit into your lifestyle. I'm not saying that you can never ever have that, but if it's something that you're frustrated with your body, either maintaining the weight loss that you've gotten or losing weight in general, look at those certain areas. Like where are you getting this, where's this coming from? And I think that can be really, really helpful at looking 
and just taking an inventory and being honest and self-aware with what's going on. But for me, if I'm just maintaining weight, I'm in a good place and don't really have any goals, like I'm just a little bit looser on the weekends. Like I said, I'm not tracking, I'm not like worrying about it as much, but I'm still choosing like healthy options. I'm still really practicing a lot of dietary constraint. My good friend, Carrie Manti has a, has a maintenance program and this is what kind of prompted this video. She did a social media poll and asking people if they'd be interested in learning how to maintain weight and she got just like an overwhelming response which was really interesting to her for sure but for me as well she was on my podcast a couple weeks ago I'm chatting about this and you know I think a lot of people do struggle with this and so I think something else that we need to chat about is that maintenance is not easy it's easy to just our portions are huge in our country. We eat, we socialize with food. It's easy to gain weight. It just is. Like there's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. It's harder to maintain weight and it's definitely still a goal. And so I think for a lot of you who think that maintenance is just like throwing in the towel and whatever, I still practice a good amount of dietary restraint, especially living with boys in my house. I am not a 10 year old boy who is training all the time and playing and fidgeting in doing sports and I'm also not my husband who trains for things like marathons and Ironmans and consistently does two a day workouts. Like I am not that metabolically active and so I can't eat like them. It just is physiology. And so when they're eating, you know, a pizza and pasta and all of this food, ice cream and things like that, like I just, I can have some, but I have to monitor my portions a whole lot more than obviously they do because they are growing boys and my husband trains like a fiend. So just kind of opening this, your eyes to this a little bit, opening this uh, communication that even if you're at maintenance, that doesn't mean free for all in terms of food. That does still mean practicing a good amount of dietary restraint um, and self-awareness, self-control, all of those different things. So that's something that has probably taken me like years, years to learn and to, to practice and learn how I specifically actually maintain. Because I too was on the wagon of either losing or gaining. Like I was never maintaining weight really. I was just doing one or the other and I would like overcorrect both ways all the time. And so I just want to, you know, bring this to your awareness and just kind of chat through like what this actually looks like. I think it's a really interesting conversation and I think it's not something that we really ever discuss openly on how to do this, where it is definitely something that's important and a goal for so many women. So, and men, so hopefully this was helpful. If you have friends and family who are struggling with this in their own life and feel like they're constantly, you know, kind of like this all or nothing mindset, like on the wagon, off the wagon, on the wagon, off the wagon, like share this with them because there is this middle ground that a lot of us need to find that we have never been taught how to find. And it's really liberating once you have found it. It's amazing. And I want that for so many of you. So anyways, share this with friends and family who need this message as well. And if you have not heard, I have a brand new free on-demand training how called How to Regain Control Over Your Life by Balancing Your Hormones for Fewer Mood Swings and Energy Crashes without adding extra stress to your schedule. You don't need to make wellness and hormone healing a full-time job and a full paycheck. It's much simpler than that. That is like my biggest mission in life to get that out to you guys. Um, and in this video, I chat all about the roots of why so many women are struggling with low energy, horrible periods, um, you know, digestive issues, sleep problems. I think I mentioned that. Um, you know, all the things that we that we struggle with and there's a root for it. It's in this video with what I'm looking for with my patients and how you can correct it on your own. I also chat about what your doctor might be missing. There's so many patients of mine that have gone to their doctor and complained about these sort of things and there's just not really any answers. They're like, you know, everything looks fine. I'm sorry. I don't know. I don't really know what's going on with you. Um, probably just perimenopause or you're stressed or you're a mom or whatever. 
Um, but there is something going on and we can correct it despite going through perimenopause, being a mom, a woman, whatever other excuse you're being told. And then thirdly, how to stay cool, calm and collected with your family without snapping at them all the time. That is a big thing that I get from so many women that they're just moody. They don't even like themselves. They know they're snapping at their kids. They don't want to. Their husband gets the brunt of it. Um, so we chat about that in this video too. So go download that at AllieDameron.com forward slash training. I'll also leave the link for that in the description below. If you haven't subscribed yet, hit that button to be notified anytime I post new content related to women's health, hormones, or holistic health. I'll see you guys in the next one.